I recently read through a patent application from Tesla entitled A Cell with a Tabless Electrode, which details the one technology that makes the 4680 battery cells possible in the first place. In this video, we're going to explore information found in this Tesla patent application. We're also going to revisit information that we learned at battery day. And I'm going to discuss why the 4680 batteries would not be possible or practical without this tabless design. At battery day, Tesla unveiled the large format 4680 battery cell that will soon be found in the new Model Y 2.0, the Cybertruck, and also the Semi. In past videos, I've talked about many aspects of the 4680 battery technology, but I've only mentioned the tabless design in passing. I would now like to dive into a more in-depth explanation of why this tabless design is so crucial to the 4680 batteries. Traditional lithium ion battery cells contain a cathode and anode tab that delivers the electrical current from these internal electrodes to the outside terminals of a battery cell. However, this conventional design can be quite inefficient and can lead to unnecessary resistance and added heat, especially during rapid charging and discharging. Now, when it comes to smaller format cells like the 18650 cells found in the Tesla Model S and X, and the 2170 cells that are slightly larger than the 18650 cells found in the Model Y and the Model 3, this conventional design does work just fine. However, when you increase the cell size to something as large as, say, the 4680 battery cell, this conventional design with electrode tabs will no longer work. As a reminder, when we talk about lithium ion battery cells with the numbers 18650, 2170, and 4680, these numbers represent the height and diameter in millimeters of a given battery cell. For example, the new 4680 battery cell has a diameter of 46 millimeters and is 80 millimeters tall. Compared to any other cylindrical cell on the market, this is a very large battery cell. As Tesla showed in this chart on battery day, without the tabless design, the larger the cell diameter, the longer the charge time. However, with a tabless design, as Tesla also showed on this chart, this charging time limitation is no longer an issue. So this of course brings up the question, how does this tabless design make such a big difference in the charging speed of the battery cells? Here is how Tesla describes it in this patent application. This, referring to the tabless battery design, reduces ohmic resistance through the negative electrode to the can, reduces current deviation across the length of the electrode, improves cell lifetime, reduces joule heating, and increases heat dissipation capability. In this video, we will dive into each one of these improvements and talk about how this occurs. However, I'd like to start, first of all, by talking about how this tabless design reduces ohmic resistance and how it reduces joule heating. To understand what I'm about to discuss, I think it's important first that we define these two terms, ohmic resistance and also joule heating. Definition.org describes ohmic resistance as a material's opposition to the flow of electric current measured in ohms. Joule heating, according to simscale.com, is the physical effect by which the passive current through an electrical conductor produces thermal energy, which is heat. The reason I group these two terms together is because they are related and the relationship is important to understand when it comes to battery technology. Simscale.com has a great article about joule heating and ohmic resistance that I'll link to in the video description if you'd like a detailed explanation. However, here's a short quote from that article that summarizes their relationship very well. Looking at Joule's law, we can see that for a given current, the higher the resistance of the conductor, the more heat is produced. Simply put, the harder it is to move electrons through the conductor, the more work is spent at moving them work that is directly converted to heat in the material. So as you can see in our example of batteries, if there is more ohmic resistance, this of course increases the joule heating and produces more thermal energy in the battery cell, which of course is not a good thing and you have to build in cooling systems to help maintain the thermal levels of a battery cell. So now that we've explained those two terms and talked about how they're related, 
I'd like to now move over specifically and talk about how Tesla describes how this applies to the tabless battery design in their patent application. They mention, the electrical resistance of a given material is directly proportional to its length. In conventional electrochemical cell designs, the electrode tab contact is typically fixed at either the end or the middle of the wound electrode. In order to initiate an electrochemical reaction, current must travel lengthwise down the electrode current collector to reach the active material where the charge transfer reactions take place. The distance the current will travel will vary from one half the length of the wound electrode, if the tab is affixed at the electrode's midpoint, to the entire length of the electrode if the tab is affixed at either end. In contrast with Tesla's new tabless design, they say, the maximum distance current will travel with the tabless design is therefore the height of the electrode as opposed to its length. Depending on the cell form factor, the height of an electrode is typically 5% to 20% of its length. Therefore, the ohmic resistance in the negative electrode during electrochemical cycling can be reduced by 5 to 20 times via embodiments of the present disclosure. At battery day, Drew Baglino mentioned that the electrical path with the tabless battery was reduced from 250 millimeters for what I assume to be a 2170 cell to only 50 millimeters in the new 4680 battery cells, which represents a five times decrease in the electrical path. As a result of this five times decrease of the length of the electrical path, this of course reduces the ohmic resistance and therefore reduces the amount of heat that is created during charging and discharging of a battery. This allows for even a large battery like the 4680 battery cell to be practical for electric vehicles that need to rapidly charge and discharge without damaging the battery due to added heat. Another improvement of this tabless design that Tesla mentioned in their patent application was that it reduces current deviation across the length of the electrode. But what does this really mean and why does it matter? Here's how Tesla describes the negative effects of current deviation in this patent application. Current deviation is the phenomena where some electrode regions pass more or less current than other regions over its cycle lifetime. Current will preferentially travel along paths where resistance is lowest, which in the absence of other factors will typically be along paths closer to the tab where the ohmic resistance is smallest. Current deviation is extremely undesirable in electrochemical cells because it can lead to local electrode hotspots where large overpotentials are generated, leading to unwanted chemical reactions that reduce the cell's lifetime. Apparently Tesla's tabless design has a lot more even distribution of current throughout the battery cell, so it eliminates these hotspots and these fluctuations and variations of current throughout the battery cell, which leads to a longer lifetime in the 4680 battery cells. To further understand this topic, I found a great research paper from the Journal of the Electrochemical Society that provides further insight into this topic of current deviation. They mention, Tesla proposes a tabless current collection method by using the current collector foil itself with a contiguous array of current collectors extending from the edge of the foil. This should mean that the current distribution inside the cell is much more uniform with the majority of the edge of each current collector foil being held at the same potential. In theory, this design reduces much of the ohmic loss inside the cell and with it, much of the heat produced. So I know those quotes could be a little bit technical, so I'd like to step back just for a minute and give just a brief overview of what that all means and why it matters. Basically, with a conventional battery design that has tabs, the electric current distribution and cell temperatures vary quite a bit from the core of the battery to the surface of the battery. This non-uniformity in temperature and current has several negative side effects, including cell degradation. However, with the new 4680 battery and tabless design, this issue appears to be greatly reduced or maybe even eliminated. So far we've talked about how this tabless design reduces the amount of resistance and thus the heat that is created in the battery cell and how the current and also the heat is more evenly distributed 
throughout the battery cell, but now I'd like to talk more about the actual heat dissipation qualities of this new battery cell and talk about how it actually dissipates heat or releases heat much better than other cell designs. Here's how Tesla describes the heat dissipation in these new 4680 battery cells. In cells of the disclosed embodiment, the conductive portion to the can contact area effectively occupies 100% of the cell diameter. Heat transfer through the base of the cell and especially heat transfer from the negative electrode are thereby improved in the disclosed embodiment due to the increased area over which the transfer takes place. The improved heat generation and transfer properties facilitate thermal management of the electrochemical cell. So these new 4680 battery cells are able to transfer heat through the base of the cell over a larger area than a traditional battery cell, which allows it to dissipate more heat more effectively. But beyond that, it also sets up a new way to be able to cool these batteries and further improve and take advantage of this characteristic. So in summary, the tabless battery design from Tesla not only generates less heat and greatly reduces the electrical current and temperature variations within the cell, but the design seems to allow for a more effective heat dissipation through the ends of the battery cells, thus eliminating the thermal issues that would normally be associated with such a large battery pack. Ultimately, the tablet's design and the characteristics that we've described, combined with other aspects of the battery technology that we've talked about in past videos, should allow these batteries to charge and discharge at very high rates without damaging the batteries, making these very practical and very impressive, all while reducing the cost of producing these batteries as well. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and also how you can support my work, I'll put a link to the Patreon community in the video description below. Thank you so much. Thank you.